It seems AMD are finally starting to turn the tide just a bit against its main competitor, Intel, of course. Intel have pretty much been running things on the market for quite some time, but AMD have reportedly gained 2.2% CPU market share in the first quarter of 2017. Now this may not sound like a lot to you and I, but it does mean that this is the very first time that they have made any meaningful share against Intel since the first quarter of 2014. Now, this is was the last quarter where we saw any share gains that were over 1%. So while we're talking, you know, still 2.2, it's still a significant increase. And again, the first time that they've gained any meaningful share gains against Intel since 2014. Now this is according to the market share report, the quarterly market share report to be exact, from Passmark. And this is based upon thousands of admissions that go through their database in any given quarter. Now, there is an important thing to keep in mind, and that's the market share data from Passmark is based on benchmark su submissions. It counts actual systems in use rather than systems sold. So, basically, if a system was sold but for some reason is not in use, it will not be counted. And also, this does not include consoles or any systems running say Linux or basically anything that is Windows so we're not talking the entire market here they do have some limitations on the data that they count but we still get a fairly clear snapshot I would say of what's going on with the market share between AMD and Intel now if you look on the screen right about now you'll see a graph courtesy of Passmark and you again will see the full reports from them in the description below as a link and here's what they had to say about this particular graph quote this graph counts the baseline submitted to us during these time periods and therefore is representative cpus in use rather than cpus purchased the quarters are by calendar year rather than the financial i.e q1 starts january 1st baselines can be submitted anywhere therefore these are global statistics we do receive a small number of submissions of cpu types other than AMD and intel however the percentage is so small as to make it not worth graphing. This combined with rounding off the percentages to two decimal places will account for each quarter, not always adding up to exactly 100%. This chart only includes x86 processors and does not include other chip architectures these manufacturers may sell, only includes CPUs installed into PCs and does not include game consoles, and as the performance test software only runs on Windows OS and counts on users submitting their benchmarks, this may be non-reflective of the non-Windows user base. So basically that's just a long-winded way of saying everything that I just said, but I just thought you might find it interesting to hear from the mouths or from the uh, fingers, I suppose you should say, of Passmark exactly how they break down and display their data. But let's go back to that 2.2 again. Now, again, it doesn't seem like much, but again, First real significant gain, yada yada yada, but it is significant for other reasons as well, and that's of course Ryzen. Now the Ryzen is undoubtedly to thank for this, and it's actually only been on sale for one out of the three months in the first quarter, and obviously there are only the more expensive top end ones, like say for example, you know the Ryzen Seven, like 1800X, 1700X, and so on. You know, we've, Ryzen Five's only just come out, and of course we haven't seen a hide nor hair of Ryzen Three, and obviously we've had stock issues with Ryzen, with it being selling out, uh, out of all major retailers. And basically this means that AMD have been selling pretty much every Ryzen chip that they've been making with only the more expensive top-end Ryzen CPUs available. Obviously, there's not only just a shortage of the actual chipset, but also the motherboards, you know. Given that I use AM4, you have to use AM4 for Ryzen, you know, that's just, that's it. That's, that is the socket that it uses. And obviously there's been a pretty significant shortage of AM4 motherboards as well. And... All that sort of thing. It's, it's much better now, but at launch, you know, we had a problem ourselves with this. Like, we, we ordered from Amazon, we had a motherboard and Ryzen 700X uh, sorted out, and it all looked fine. And then, you know, we even rang Amazon to make sure, do you actually have this in stock? And they were like, yeah, 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 it's cool. And then, basically, we found out on the day we were going to have it, we all got an email from someone else at Amazon saying, basically, we don't know why you were told that. We don't actually have this in stock. It's going to be X amount of time. And we had to find someone else post haste to get hold of Ryzen, um, you know, lest we be waiting a long time for new motherboards and so on to come into stock. So, you know, the launch was kind of beleaguered by that, but despite that, you know, it's still fairly significant 
And I think even because of that, it's still significant that Ryzen, having only been out for a short time and having these issues with availability, is still making a significant impact on the market share for AMD. Now we also have seen between the 1st of January and the 31st of March, the install base for AMD CPUs have grown from 18.1%, again excluding consoles, to 203 which is an accumulative growth of 12%. Now I do wonder what the figures would be if you included consoles, but obviously this is about the PC market, so... Mm. So, it will be interesting to see the full report from Passmark for the entire year, again Ryzen has only been on sale for the one month out of those three, and obviously the issues of availability. So what I want to see is the complete picture, and obviously you know when Intel releases what they've been working on as well. It's definitely going to be interesting, but I think that this might mark a sort of swing of the pendulum back in the favour of AMD for the first time in a while. But of course, we are talking about Intel here. There are no, there are no pushover when it comes to this stuff, so it's going to be definitely hard work, but I think AMD could definitely do it with Ryzen, but we'll see. Again, you can find the report link below. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.